Let's be honest about this. Yeah, let's. Your honeys? These are my what? These are my babies. babies. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. You're a pig. <laughs> I cried because I, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was like, I was totally in love. We were totally in love. And it was beautiful. It was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day, you know, for me, you know, for my part. I remember being on the set and being in my dressing room and not feeling like I could get up in the morning and there's just no pain like that. There's no pain or failure like going through a divorce. Despite what seemed like Jennifer Lopez had a fairy tale reunion with Ben Affleck, rumors are now swirling that this iconic Hollywood duo might be on the verge of splitting, sooner than anyone anticipated. These whispers come just after the release of JLo's documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told, where she couldn't stop gushing about Ben being her true love. Talk about awkward timing. If you've followed JLo's love life over the years, this might feel like deja vu. It seems that with every new relationship, she's convinced she's found the one. Enter the drama with her first ex-husband, Ojani Noah. Never one to hold back, Ojani is back with some juicy revelations. He claims that the only person J.Lo truly loves is herself, and even predicted that her rekindled romance with Ben Affleck wouldn't last long. It looks like he might be onto something. An old video of Jennifer Lopez and her first ex-husband, Ojani Noah, has resurfaced, and it's stirring up quite the storm. This footage is anything but flattering for J.Lo, casting her in a seriously negative light. In the video, Ojani appears visibly uneasy, hinting at a side of J.Lo that the public rarely, if ever, gets to see. He even confessed that he was genuinely afraid of her, suggesting that there's more to the story than meets the eye. If Ojani was scared, it's not hard to imagine why Ben might be looking for the exit. I was never used to being alone. I had a big family. They, you know, I had cousins and my aunts and my grandma, and they'd all always be around. And so when I went off on my own, I realized how uncomfortable I was being alone, I had to learn how to do that, you know? Jennifer Lopez, the queen of headline-grabbing romances and whirlwind marriages, has always kept the tabloids buzzing. With rumors swirling about a possible split from Ben Affleck, it's the perfect time to dive into her past relationships and uncover what her exes have revealed. Buckle up, because J.Lo's romantic history is a wild ride filled with drama, jealousy, and some serious revelations. Let's rewind to 1997, when Jennifer was still glowing from her breakout role in Selena. That same year, she walked down the aisle with her first husband, Cuban actor and producer Ojani Noah. Their marriage, however, was short-lived, lasting just 11 months. It's a strange twist of fate, one that's almost too perfect for a rom-com, how Ojani, a Cuban immigrant who arrived in the U.S. on a six-foot inflatable dinghy at 15, ended up married to one of the world's biggest stars. His story is the kind of rags-to-riches narrative Hollywood loves. But after their 1998 divorce, the fairy tale unraveled, leaving Ojani to contend with a very different reality. But Ojani wasn't about to fade into the background quietly. Far from it. He had plans to release a tell-all book about his time with J.Lo. Ojani saw firsthand how Hollywood changed J.Lo. She went from Jen to being J.Lo, this big business bringing in millions. She had all these new people around her, all wanting to make money off her. I would call and an assistant would say, sorry, she's not available. Naturally, Jennifer wasn't having any of it. She quickly took legal action, suing Ojani to stop him from airing her dirty laundry, effectively halting his publishing dreams. But here's where the plot thickens. Ojani claimed that their marriage fell apart because of Jennifer's blossoming relationship with Sean P. Diddy Combs while she was still married to him. In a spill-all to the Daily Mail, Ojani revealed that when he confronted Jen about her relationship with Diddy, she brushed it off as just business and something she was being told to do. But let's be real, who would buy that excuse? His jealousy was clearly justified, as J. Lo and Diddy soon went public with their romance, leaving Ojani in the dust. I was very, like, family-oriented, and uh, that's how I was raised. Once I got to know him and, you know, we became friends first, and then, um... We, we developed this bond. We both understood where we were at that time in our lives, and we both knew nobody else understood exactly how we felt. 
so in that way we kind of bonded. Diddy, never one to shy away from talking about his high-profile romances, later reflected in a 2006 interview with People, calling Jennifer one of the great ones. But coming from Diddy, does that really mean anything? Given his notorious antics, being labeled great by him might be more of a red flag than a compliment. Once the Diddy drama settled, Jennifer didn't waste any time moving on. In 2001, she found herself smitten with Chris Judd, a backup dancer she met on the set of her Love Don't Cost a Thing music video. Their chemistry was undeniable, and before the year ended, they were married. However, the relationship fizzled just as quickly as it ignited, with J.Lo filing for divorce less than a year later. Chris later hinted that Jennifer wasn't exactly committed to making their marriage work, telling Us Weekly that marriage requires effort and dedication something J.Lo seemed to lack. The pressures of fame didn't help either. Chris shared how their relationship was far from private, recalling their wedding as a circus, so much so that they had to rent the airspace above their venue to keep it secure. Despite his efforts, Jennifer seemed more focused on her next chapter. And on to the next chapter, she went, right into the arms of Mark Anthony. Although they had a brief fling in the late 90s, things got serious after her split from Chris. Mark soon became husband number three, and together they welcomed twins, Max and Emmy. But even the joy of parenthood couldn't keep their marriage from unraveling. From her brief marriage to Ojani, her highly publicized relationship with Diddy, to her tumultuous marriage with Mark, J.Lo's love life has been anything but smooth. And if the rumors about her and Ben Affleck are true, it looks like history might just be repeating itself. When J.Lo and Mark Anthony tied the knot in June 2004, the timing couldn't have been more eyebrow-raising. Mark had literally just finalized his divorce from his first wife, Dianara Torres, with whom he shares two sons. Naturally, the gossip mill started churning out rumors that J.Lo might have played the homewrecker role in this scenario. But let's be real, if any anyone's got a track record of complicated love lives, it's Mark, considering he has seven kids with three different women. Talk about a full house. Fast forward to July 2011, and J.Lo and Mark called it quits, announcing their separation with a statement to E! News. Now, you'd think after three divorces and with two little ones to look after, J.Lo might hit pause on the dating scene, right? Well, think again. Our girl J.Lo just can't seem to stay single for long. Less than three months after her split with Mark was public, she was already back in the headlines in November 2011, flaunting her new romance with backup dancer Casper Smart, who, by the way, is a whole 18 years younger than her. Casper later opened up about their relationship to Ola magazine, saying, I was 23 or 24, she was 18 years older, so she was about 42 years old with two kids. But in the moment, everything just clicked. We spent every day together for a year. The two met while working on the music video for Dance Again, and their whirlwind romance played out very publicly for about two and a half years. But the plot thickens when J.Lo's path crosses with former New York Yankee star Alex Rodriguez. A-Rod later gushed that meeting Jennifer was the luckiest day of his life. And it wasn't long before J.Lo called it quits with Casper and went public with her new boo, Alex, in 2017. Their romance seemed like something out of a fairy tale, complete with a million-dollar diamond ring when A-Rod popped the question during a dreamy Bahamian vacation about two years later. But despite the bling and the big engagement, the wedding kept getting pushed back, with the couple blaming the delays on the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the pandemic wasn't the only thing messing with their happy ever after. By April 2021, it was game over for J-Rod. And guess who J-Lo was spotted with that very same month? Yep, none other than her old flame, Ben Affleck. As soon as rumors started flying about Benefer 2.0, J-Lo didn't waste a second scrubbing A-Rod from her Instagram like he was just a bad memory. This is where J-Lo's PR machine kicked into high gear, subtly suggesting that A-Rod may have cheated and that he was still hung up on her, refusing to let go. One insider spilled to the media that J-Lo told Alex that Ben was her everything now, but A-Rod just couldn't get the message. The irony? When J-Lo and A-Rod got engaged in 2019, she was out there proclaiming him as her forever partner and soulmate. Sound familiar? Seems like J-Lo's got a knack for recycling those grand declarations. A source close to J-Lo even told People, back then. They are incredible together. Very much soulmates that bring out the best in each other and are so supportive of each other. 
From the start, they moved very quickly. Their relationship was always very passionate. Jennifer quickly fell very hard for Alex, and she quickly started planning for the future. But as we've seen, in J-Lo's world, forever has a pretty flexible definition. We all know J-Lo has this habit of ditching relationships faster than you can say A-Rod, and the latest proof of that came when she swapped out her soulmate, Alex Rodriguez, for her ex, Ben Affleck, like it was yesterday's news. Talk about a plot twist. A-Rod was reportedly blindsided by J-Lo's swift rebound. Imagine going from planning a future with someone to seeing them back with an old flame. Sources close to him revealed that Alex was not just surprised, but genuinely shocked. He had this whole idea that they'd find their way back to each other. But when J-Lo and Ben rekindled their romance, A-Rod was left reeling. Insiders spilled that Alex tried reaching out to J-Lo to talk things over, but she was having none of it. She was done, and she made it crystal clear. He was not just shocked, but also felt a sting of sadness seeing J-Lo move on so fast. But A-Rod wasn't just sitting around and moping. No, he took to social media to subtly throw some shade. He posted a picture next to a red Porsche, the very same one he gifted J-Lo for her 50th birthday. With the caption, I'm super down to earth. Talk about a passive-aggressive flex. And here's where the plot thickens. Alex was reportedly not only annoyed by how quickly J-Lo moved on, but also how she seemed to play the media like a pro. Remember back in 2004, when J-Lo blamed media frenzy for derailing her wedding plans with Ben? Fast forward to 2021, and it was like she was basking in the media spotlight with Ben. The irony was not lost on Alex, who saw this as a big old double standard. But the drama doesn't end there. According to the rumor mill, Alex has been whispering to his closest friends that he suspects J-Lo was cheating on him with Ben while they were still together. He's convinced that the chaos J-Lo is facing now is nothing more than karma for how things went down between them. Sources revealed that Alex was devastated when J-Lo left him for Ben. He felt like he was tossed aside as soon as a better offer came along. It was like his entire world crumbled overnight, watching J-Lo marry someone else while he was left in the dust. The whole situation was described as the worst year of his life, with J-Lo flaunting her new relationship in his face, which only made things worse. Now, with rumors swirling about J-Lo and Ben's marriage possibly hitting the rocks, A-Rod is apparently living for the drama. Insiders claim he's enjoying every bit of the spectacle, even if he won't publicly admit it. It's almost like he's savoring the poetic justice of J-Lo's relationship troubles. One source mentioned that Alex feels he dodged a major bullet by not marrying J-Lo. He's watching the drama unfold with a sense of vindication, and despite his outward calm, he's got plenty of resentment simmering beneath the surface. And don't think we're done with the drama just yet. Oh, Johnny Noah, J-Lo's first husband, is having his own I told you so moment. He was the first to predict that J-Lo and Ben wouldn't last, and now he's sitting back and enjoying the show, feeling pretty smug about his spot-on prediction. When J-Lo and Ben Affleck exchanged vows in that Las Vegas whirlwind ceremony in July 2022, it felt like a page ripped straight from a fairy tale. After two decades of off-and-on drama, this moment was hyped as the ultimate proof that true love conquers all. The media couldn't get enough of the Benefer reunion, proclaiming it as a triumph of fate over the fickleness of romance. For J-Lo, who had weathered through three previous marriages, this was supposed to be her happily ever after, with the man she always insisted was her soulmate. But while everyone else was busy gushing over the return of Benefer, Ojani Noah, J-Lo's first husband, had a few choice words about the whole affair. Ojani, who once basked in the glow of J-Lo's declarations of eternal love, didn't hold back. Speaking to the Daily Mail, he pointed out that J-Lo had previously dubbed him her forever guy, a claim he couldn't help but find ironic considering her track record. In his words, that was three husbands and five engagements ago. He expressed a rather skeptical outlook on the longevity of J-Lo's fourth marriage, noting her penchant for short-lived engagements and marriages. I wish her and Ben the best, Ojani remarked but I'm not convinced it will last. Ojani's dissatisfaction went beyond just wedding cynicism. He painted a rather grim picture of their past life together. According to him, the bliss J-Lo professed was a far cry from reality. During their marriage, Ojani claimed J-Lo's team encouraged him to fake it for the cameras. This facade was part of a broader strategy to project an idealized version of their relationship, even as things were falling apart behind the scenes. He recounted how they traveled to Chicago to film an open Oprah Winfrey interview, where J-Lo put on a show of marital bliss despite their mounting issues. 
Ojani was left feeling like a pawn in a public relations game, while Oprah's probing questions about their troubles were met with J. Lo's rehearsed assurances of everything being amazing. Ojani's grievances didn't stop there. He revealed that he shed 40 pounds due to the stress of trying to salvage their marriage, all while their public life became a charade. He described this period as one where their entire existence seemed to be a lie, showcasing the chasm between their public image and private struggles. But wait, there's more. The drama surrounding Ojani and J.Lo doesn't end with just broken promises and marital disillusionment. An old interview with Ojani recently resurfaced, revealing even wilder allegations. In this throwback piece, Ojani accused J.Lo of using witchcraft and love spells to manipulate her romantic fortunes. Whether these claims were made in jest or out of genuine belief, they certainly added another layer to the already tangled narrative of J.Lo's love life. Remember when J.Lo snagged the role of the late Mexican-American singer Selena in the 97 biopic? Yeah, that's right. Before she had even a shred of acting cred and wasn't even Mexican. Well, brace yourself because the buzz back then was wild. Some people whispered that J.Lo might have used actual witchcraft to land that iconic part. These aren't just random rumors either. Since the 90s, chatter about J.Lo's supposed magical maneuvers has been a thing. Rumor has it that J.Lo has a Miami-based godmother wielding the dark arts of Santeria to boost J.Lo's career and personal life. This juicy tidbit comes courtesy of Claudia Vasquez, who's not only dating J.Lo's ex-husband, Ojani Noah, but is also stirring up trouble by threatening to release a potentially scandalous tape of Lopez. Wanna be caught a snippet from a Spanish gossip show where Vasquez spills the beans about J.Lo's alleged Santeria shenanigans. I've been told she does the worst frightening stuff. Jennifer has a godmother in Miami, which I've never met, but Ojani knows her. And she calls this woman to tell her, do this to this person, put up a black candle, etc. She's done Amaris, spells, on all her boyfriends. It's a typical thing for anybody involved in Santeria. But even with all that, she always ends up leaving them. Vasquez also claims that J.Lo might have used Santeria to edge out Salma Hayek for the Selena role. Talk about taking competition to the next level. On top of this, J.Lo, Noah, and Vasquez are embroiled in a legal mess over a tape that allegedly shows Lopez nude, supposedly shot during her time with Noah. J.Lo has already won court battles blocking Noah from releasing the footage. Now her lawyers suspect that Vasquez might be trying to leak it through Noah. But hold up, it gets even wilder. Rumor has it J.Lo might have leveraged her connections with big-time industry figures to land the role. Apparently, Tommy Mot Tola, Mariah Carey's ex and former Sony Music CEO, was rumored to be involved. There were whispers that J. Lo and Tommy had a thing going on right around the time she was filming Selena. In 1998, J. Lo hit the Grammy Awards with Tommy, and shortly after, she signed a record deal with Sony. Just a coincidence? You decide. Fans aren't surprised at the witchcraft claims, saying, that's why she cannot stay with any of her lovers. Getting love via witchcraft never works out. And witchcraft kind of fits with Ben's description of a fever dream. To which someone added, few dancers even said she did this witchcraft thing at the rehearsal. So, what's your take on this messy J. Lo drama? Are Ojani Noah's claims giving you pause? Could there be some truth to those witchcraft rumors? Yeah. J. Lo, she just, she seems like a, a just a slower. You know what I mean? Um, I can name five men that she slept with. So, that's already terrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? For any chick you know, watching this, if any man can name five men that you have slept with, that is a red flag. That is a bad sign. I don't care if they were all your husbands. You should, if the fact that you had to go through five husbands, that's already a bad sign. How come the first marriage is, how come, how come you cannot pick a proper husband? Why do you have such terrible judgment? And yeah, like all of these things are terrible, terrible, terrible signs, you know? Um, we just covered Erica Badu, same thing for her, you know? a slore. You know what I mean? I can name five men that she has slept with. That is a problem. <laughs> you know, that is a problem. You know, um, just as one of her ex-husbands was calling out. And yeah, I mean, are, can you be surprised? I mean, when you've, when you've taken so much, it's hard to appreciate this one thing right here when you've taken all of these, all, so many of these other things so many other things that you've taken in, right? Um, yeah, so when you've been with so many men, then you can't be satisfied by one man because you've been with so many different archetypes. It's going to take a more, 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 more extreme to satisfy you. And that's why Jayla will never be satisfied because she's been with too many men. She she cannot pair bond. 
you know? They say that, you know, after, like, after a woman's been in, like, two relationships or something like that, like, after her first, like, three relationships or something like that, her chance of pair bonding goes down, like, 75%, okay? So, yes, bro, yes, like, um, she just cannot pair bond. She's been with too many men, you know? She's, she's taken too many, uh... You know, she, she she's taking too much, you know, she's, um, yeah, so she's been stretched out way too much, <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's not that much J-Lo to go around the whole entire planet, you know, so it's just not going to work out. And um, clearly we're seeing that being reflected in her relationships, you know, this is an unfortunate thing, but, you know, she probably lacked the proper parenting or you know, just being in the industry, being around these types of scenarios, being around these types of people with these type with um, certain types of power and certain leverages, and you have to get yourself in certain scenarios. Yeah, well, you're going to do that. You know, we saw that she was with Diddy, so we know she was doing all types of tricks at uh, Diddy's mansion. You know what I mean? We know she was doing all types of tricks and all types of backflips and all types of cartwheels and front flips. You know, she was doing somersaults on Diddy. Like, let, let's be real. She was doing somersaults in, in Diddy's mansion, okay? So, um, yeah. We already know that uh, J-Lo is not, nah, this is not a pure woman, you know? This is, you know, the, the last thing I would describe her as is pure, you know? No, this is an impure person. And this is why um, when you take an impure person and you try to put them in a pure scenario, which is what marriage is supposed to be, well, that could never work. You know what I mean? How could you take an impure person and put them in a pure situation? That's like putting a demon in, 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 inside of a pool full of holy water. Like, <laughs> like that doesn't, do you, do you think that's going to work? Well, no, no, this is what happened, you know? And then you end up getting burned, you know? So this is what happens. So, um, do I believe she may have cheated with Ben Affleck um, on her other husband? Def that's definitely a possibility, you know? After seeing her with Diddy, I think I wouldn't put anything past her, you know, morally speaking. And um, as far as, you know, her just being a voracious, uh, some type of voracious addict for, for intimacy, you know what I mean? I wouldn't put that past her, not at all, to the point where she would cheat with Ben Affleck on her other husband, probably, you know? I definitely could see it because... Um, yeah, all morals go out the window when you're dealing with Diddy, so. Yeah, man, I mean, that's really what there, that's really all there is to say about it. When you analyze it, when you break it down from a true perspective and you look at all these things for what they are, the things that are being shown in front of us, the things that are a part of observable reality, when you look at all of these things and you analyze them, you can come to the true one conclusion that J-Lo was a slur who can never pair bond again. She's been ruined, you know, ruined. Like, like just a piece of garbage, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, but a pretty piece of garbage, you know what I mean? Like, um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, like, 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 a. I I can't come up with a good enough synonym for something like this, but just kind of like how, you know, how, like, you know, how they make, the, they have those bakers make those really, really, really pretty looking cakes. There's like the perfect looking cake. But no matter what, it's a cake. If you eat it too much, you're going to get diabetes. And you get diabetes, now you have to be amputated. You know what I mean? Like, it all leads to... It, it, it's a pretty looking thing. It's a pretty looking package. But it's disgusting on the inside. The effects of it are, are disgusting. And, yeah, the implications are not good. <laughs> this is the type of thing, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's the whole situation with J-Lo. You know, that's as much as I could say about it when I, when I really break it down in that way. But yeah, y'all, let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know y'all thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that she cheated on her other husband with Ben Affleck? What do you guys think about J-Lo being with Diddy? Now that we know, now that we know everything that we know about Diddy, you know what I mean? About the Diddler. Now that we know everything we know about the Diddler, like, what do you guys think about that? You know, I think that has really bad implications for her and for her future and for her pan bonding. And as far as any man that knows that she's been with Diddy, as far as now that we know how Diddy really is, oh, man, like. Uh, I don't know about that. That might not be a good long-term investment, my guy, my G, you know, unless it's obviously a financial investment. Yes, of course, of course it would. But otherwise, other than that, no, no, no. I don't see the long-term value in being with someone like J-Lo. I really don't. It looks, it looks bad. But yeah, you guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, like the video. It snows right here.
Be easy, y'all.